This video shows how to complete an independent samples t-test in Sheets. Um, so for this one, you should already have watched and completed the video for adding the extension for Excel Miner um, or completed that in class. So make sure you have this Excel Miner analysis tool pack when you go to extensions. Um, but first, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to create a, I'm going to duplicate this page. So I'm going to say duplicate. And I'm going to rename this and I'm going to name it whatever I decided to name, um, whichever variables I decide to use for the analysis. So I'm going to look at sex and units. Um, actually, let's do, yeah, let's do sex and units. So I'm going to do sex underscore units. Sounds like a band name. Um, so for this, I want to just have, I just want to keep those two variables. Um, you could do this on the same, on this sheet with all the data analysis, it, it's just going to get a little bit messy. And so I think it's easier to copy this and then do your data analysis on the specific responses. Um, so I'm going to click on gender, GPA, work hours, all of these other variables. I'm going to delete them. So I'm just left with my two variables of interest. Now, I want to sort my responses on this variable on biological sex. And so I'm going to, um, you could either right click or you can click this little uh, arrow right there. But I'm going to sort the sheet from A to Z. And um, what that is going to do is that should put them in order. Um, so, oh, I know why. We're having problems here. Hold on. Um, I forgot I had set this up a while ago. So I'm actually going to copy this and I just pasted it. Uh, I had this linked to a different data set. That's where the data came from. So um, now I'm going to sort it. There we go. Uh, so that sorted our data so that we can see we have these are all female responses right here. And I could go ahead and even highlight them and say, okay, these are all the female responses. So biological sex, female, and I could make all of the male responses a different color. Um, it could be stereotypical and make them blue. But this is how we would visualize breaking up our data because we're talking about conducting an independent samples t-test. You might even wanna add a note like independent um, that you're going to conduct that test because we have two independent groups, female and male, um, and we're going to compare units across those, those two sexes. So when you go to extensions, how this works is when you click on Excel Miner Analysis Tool Pack and you click Start, it comes up with a menu for you. And we're going to use t-test. We're going to use the two sample assuming unequal variances. Um, Assuming unequal variances is a more conservative test, so it will help us avoid making a type one error. Um, and so when I click on this, it comes up with how to, where to input the data. Now, this is kind of a weird thing. I don't know why they set it up this way. I am not in charge of Excel Miner, but you're gonna highlight the data that you wanna put in your variable one range. That's the first group. And that is what we're trying to get the, um, the mean of to compare against the other groups. So we need to use units because that's the variable we're gonna get the mean for. Now you could even add a note to yourself and insert a row above here and say, this is our, um, we need the mean of units for um, our grouping variable. So these are our groups would be female and male. And so what we wanna do is we wanna say, okay, Female is going to be our variable range one. So I'm going to highlight all of these right here, female responses for units. And I'm only going to highlight the female responses. And then I click here and it's going to add the cells where we have female responses. Now you don't want to click in this again after you've set it. So notice if I were to click here, it's gonna fill it in with the same highlighted information. So we need to go in and highlight all of the male responses for units. And we're going to click right there. 
And so now we cover this entire range for the variables. This is group one, group two. We're gonna set our hypothesized mean difference to zero. We're gonna leave alpha as 0.05, unless you feel you must change it. Um, you cannot make it larger, but if you wanna make it smaller, so be it. Uh, and then we're gonna pick an output range. And I want you to pick this top, um, actually let's use the second to down one right here, uh, just so we have a little bit of space for our results. So I'm gonna click there and then I'm gonna click here for output range. I'm gonna say, okay, and your t-test is done. So you should make some edits here. Um, it is important to note that we have the number of observations for each group. We want that information. Uh, and it gives us the mean for each group, but it doesn't give us the standard deviation. It gives us the variance. Something that I like to do is I highlight. So I'll click and hold and highlight this. And then you can hover on it at the top where you get this little white hand and I can just pull it down a row and that won't add rows here, it just adds it right specifically there, which is one of the things I like about sheets. And then I can add standard deviation. So if I say equals the SQRT, square root of variance, that's my standard deviation for that group. And then I can carry that over and copy that formula and it will give me the square root of that value. Um, I'm also gonna add in the differences here. So variable one is actually female that's the group, but it's the it's units. That's the variable that we actually calculated for, but it's for the female group. And then this is the units, but for the male group. And so now we have all this information. Um, so we have the mean for each group. We have the standard deviation for each group that we'll be reporting. We have the number of observations. So we can see we had more females than males in the sample. We have degrees of freedom, which is our total number of observations minus two. This is our T statistic. So we would need to note that our T statistic is 0.51. And then you will have completed a one-tailed test. And this is your p-value for your one-tailed test. So I'm going to say one-tailed p-value here. This is our t-score. And you can see that our t-critical is here um, for the one-tailed. And so we can use our method of saying, oh, this is our t-statistic that we calculate our t-score is not more extreme than our t-critical. So it's not going to be statistically significant. Or you could look at the p-value and say, oh, 0.31, well, that's not less than 0.05. So we can't reject our null hypothesis. So we're going to fail to reject our null hypothesis. I do want to note that when you're reading this information, you want to pay attention to the mean. So if your hypothesis, um, and this, this test is a bad example because it's not gonna be statistically significant no matter what, but imagine you found statistical significance, you would need to look and see, oh, males had higher number of units or lower number of units, and that is the direction that I thought it was gonna be. So for a one-tailed test, for it to be significant, it has to be the direction that you thought. The group that you thought would be bigger has to be bigger. So you'll have to look at your results and interpret them in comparison to the mean. Um, so this is how you conduct an independent samples t-test. Isn't that better than hand calculations? <laughs>